station of the Oregon Sports Network. And Oregon is going to play in the national championship game. Welcome to Duck Insider. Duck Insider. Man, it feels great to be a duck. Give it to me, baby. My house. I'm taking it there. Third competitor. They'll want to put the O on. Three. Got it. We're going to compete to a standard every day. The Oregon standard. Rebound. Got it. it in. point more to go. The opportunity to play, put Oregon on your chest, should mean a great deal to you. Unloads on one into left field. Back toward the wall. Go! This program is staged to compete and to win championships. Oregon wins! This is Duck Insider on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. Presented by On Point Community Credit Union. Better banking, local solutions. Live from the Country Financial Studio, let's talk Oregon athletics. All right, everyone's got to bear with me for another about two and a half minutes because the U.S. men's national team is currently leading 1-0 if you're live with us in the 1 o'clock hour. Uh, this is good. You can just leave it on this camera, Ryan. This is nice. The, the camera that sends us in and out of breaks, the, the studio cam, if you will, is actually mounted on our TV. Um, so if you ever notice that I'm staring right at you when we start a show or we – Oh! Oh! Whew. Oh, this is this is very difficult. Um, anyway, if you ever notice that we're that we're like watching you coming out of a break, that's because we're actually watching something on TV. So, uh, one minute left of stoppage time. Okay, well, welcome to Duck Insider. It's presented by On Point Community Credit Union. We're in the Country Financial Studio, and uh, this is like I don't know if anyone else remembers this. We were on the air one time during a volleyball. God, that was almost a goal. We were on the air one time during a volleyball NCAA tournament, and we thought that Duck Insider would end beforehand, but the the match in front of the Ducks went long. I think this was in like 2000, might have been 2017 actually. And so the, the game was going on, the match was going on while we were getting ready to start the show. And next thing we knew, it was like we were just – we're literally just listening to, I think it was Matt Tyra at the time. And Matt Tyra was like giving us the full play-by-play -play of, of Oregon volleyball. And then we were on Duck Insider and it ended up being this like keeping track of two things at once. Um, so bear with us. Damon Merkerson is going to join us coming up here today. Damon Merkerson, the Senior Associate Athletic Director for Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, and Belonging. Uh, both men's and women's basketball, their Pac-12 and SWAC Legacy Series games. Damon did a lot around those two events, and I want to talk to him about that. And, and also, it's be the second time that he's joined us as he settled in a little bit. And then yesterday, we didn't get a chance because there was so much football and volleyball to talk about to really go as in-depth on basketball as I wanted to. So we're going to do that today. Great conversation with Mike Menega that I had post game. You'll love his energy from the Oregon assistant coach. Now the longest tenured Oregon assistant coach, actually. Mike Menega in his ninth season with the Ducks. And we'll also hear from Kelly Graves after the Phil Knight Invitational Tournaments where the men were able to salvage a game. And it's over. All right. Thanks to Graham Abel, he gave us the Team USA. This is the send-off series ball, USA versus Mexico in Hartford, Connecticut, July 1st of 2021, number 7 of 13. I don't know if anyone's ever noticed that this ball has actually been on the desk before. This is from Graham Abel, who coached, of course, with the U.S. women's national team, and I thought that it was just important that I hold this ball pretty much the entire <laughs> lead up to the show today. So we did. Um, and now, Team USA, moving on. Yes. And the ball is good luck. So we're just going to keep that on the desk right next to us today. That that gives you good juju. Another ball that's going to give everybody good juju, Matt Ulmer. He's going to join us for an extended segment tomorrow because his Oregon volleyball team is in the NCAA tournament. Friday, 7 o'clock against Loyola Marymount. And I will be affectionately calling Loyola Marymount the Fighting Craig Pittenses. Craig Pittens, former senior associate athletic director for the Ducks, is now the athletic director at Loyola Marymount. I haven't gotten a chance to talk to him yet, but I hope that Craig's making the trip. Chance to come back to Oregon, 
Hopefully he's making the trip with the Lions volleyball team. But that's all coming up. Brooke Nunaviller is going to join us in the studio on Thursday. And then we'll also hear some updates from Dana Altman and Kelly Graves programs later on in the week. And then, of course, Oregon volleyball takes center stage Friday in your Toyota Women's Sports Schedule Spotlight. Toyota, let's go places women's volleyball Friday, 7 o'clock. All right, Oregon basketball over the weekend. Let's start with the men. A tough loss for the Ducks against UConn, and I think that loss for me is going to be an important one moving forward because the Ducks were already so banged up. Still no Rigsby, no Kusnard. Coach Altman said after that game that Keyshawn Bartholomew is going to be out at least four to six weeks. A tough loss for the Ducks. When your opposition shoots a program record three-pointers, number of three-pointers, not going to go well. It didn't go well, but the Ducks – to their credit, responded. And I'll tell you, it was it was really interesting with the Friday game being at 9 o'clock against Michigan State, 9 p.m. Pacific time. I still think I have not found one in the record book. I think it's the latest Pacific time tip-off the Ducks have ever had, actually. They tipped off about 9-10 Pacific time. Oregon played Virginia in Louisville in the Sweet 16 a few years ago. That game tipped off because Tennessee – went to overtime the game before the Ducks. That game tipped off at about just about 10 o'clock local time, but that was Eastern time zone. So Pacific time zone, I think it was the latest tip-off ever. Why that's important. The Ducks had a long time to be at the hotel, go through a shoot-around, but they had a long time to think about that drubbing that UConn gave them. And Tyrone Williams got banged up in the game, so Oregon was even more shorthanded heading into the Michigan State matchup. Then, in the first half, the Ducks lost in Folly Dante to concussion protocol. Nate Biddle exited in the game hobbling later on, and I'm just sitting there. I got to tell you, I'm, I'm sitting at Veterans Memorial Coliseum just going like, man, the Ducks, one, can't catch a break. Two, they had to think about that loss to UConn. And then, three, they showed a lot of fight. I, I really think they just ran out of bodies. They ran out of gas. But a really gritty, gritty game for the Ducks. So they had a long time to think about it. Whatever they were thinking about clearly worked. Michigan State ended up only winning. A top 25 team in their own right ended up only winning by four points. So then it was really interesting for me because it was a late game, right? Ducks are beat up, go back to the hotel. They have an off day on Saturday. Wasn't an off day for the broadcaster, though. The broadcaster was driving to Corvallis. So I wasn't around the team at all on Saturday. By the time I got back from football, I wasn't around the basketball team at all on Saturday. So getting up on Sunday for what was an earlier game at noon against a Villanova team that, again, I said this yesterday, if you told me that Oregon was going to play Villanova on Sunday, I would have said, well, it's at least for third place in the Phil Knight Invitational. But both of those really good programs took losses, ended up in the seventh place game of the Phil Knight Invitational officially in the tournament bracket. Villanova, a little banged up, just like the Ducks. Michigan State was a little banged up, just like the Ducks. But a gritty win from Oregon on, on Sunday. And I did not know what to expect from the Ducks. Because a game like that against Michigan State, where you, you, you play your butt off and it doesn't go your way, you're already banged up, right? That, that can go one of two ways. It's either going to be, no, you know what? This is a tough team. They're going to fight through it. Or it's going to be, oh, man, nothing's going our way. And, and then not good. You all know what I'm talking about. A gritty win for the Ducks. They led most of the game. And then there was another example of I didn't know how Oregon would react. The Ducks lost the lead late in the game and then ended up closing on a 10-0 run. Now, why is that important? The Ducks hit their last three field goals after Villanova took the lead under four minutes to play. Oregon ended up holding the Cats to O of their last four from the floor, and they held them to a scoring drought of two minutes and 27 seconds to end the game. Again, Oregon had some adversity. They fought through it. I think we learned a lot about this team, and maybe it's going to come back to the UConn loss, the Michigan State loss, and then a shorthanded win over Villanova. Now, look, Oregon needs bodies. We know that. But a couple things happened against Villanova. One, Will Richardson put together back-to-back -back games where he looked like an all-conference type player. 19 points against Villanova, a team-leading eight assists. Was involved on the majority of Oregon's baskets. Then Quincy Gurrier. He had fouled out in Thursday's game and, on, and in Friday's game. And it seems to me that officials are really watching him for offensive fouls. He's been whistled for a few offensive charges over the last few weeks. Quincy Gurrier stayed in the game. 
Four fouls. But he scored 21 points on 7 of 13 shooting, and he did it in 33 minutes. That's what you need from Will Richardson and Quincy Gurrier. Those are the two guys, I think, that are going to make a huge difference for this team moving forward. And they had four players score in double figures, including Rivaldo Soares and Kalel Ware. He was forced, in a lot of ways, to step into a bigger role in this tournament because of the availability of Dante and Biddle. And I thought Ware got better as the tournament went on. Is Oregon Ware... The Ducks want to be right now at three and four? No. But you got to think that come end of the season, the committee's probably going to give them the benefit of the doubt because they were so banged up. They still got some gritty wins when they were shorthanded. And now maybe this is a team that has found its gritty identity a little bit. And you know what? The best Coach Altman teams, kind of gritty. They don't always have to win pretty. The best teams win ugly. Because there's going to be games where you don't shoot it well at all, and you got to win. Ducks also did hit some shots in this game. 38% from three, still a little bit on the low end, but 44% overall from the floor. Huge response from Oregon, and I give them a lot of credit. Because there wasn't a lot of energy in the building, I'll be honest with you. Child Center, Sunday afternoon, holiday weekend, there just wasn't a lot of energy in the building. Well, the Ducks responded in a big way. I want to let you listen first to my conversation post-game with Mike Menega because I think you'll hear just the determination in his voice from the entire coaching staff. And then later on in today's show, we'll hear a little bit from what Coach Altman had to say post-game. My chat with Mike Menega at the end of the Phil Knight Invitational when Oregon got back on the winning side of things. Coach, how good does it feel in that locker room right Ooh. now getting a win, huh? Man, Joey, that was an absolutely incredible job. Everybody from Coach Altman all the way down to, you know, James Cooper, Brady Paris, and Gabe Reichel, our walk-ons. I mean, you look at the – you think about this in perspective. Our walk-ons, you know, played – almost over 30 minutes yeah that's right so this team's got a lot of guts they got a lot of heart and i think the biggest thing that we figured out man we got ourselves a leader in will richardson and uh and man he's been through ups and downs but if you look at his career at oregon you're talking about a guy that's been to three ncaa champ tim tournaments yep. multiple sweet 16s one pack 12 championships you know so will really has stepped up not only as a player but as an emotional leader in our locker room it's really awesome to see you know how big was that game on, on friday coach and then also continuing that gritty momentum here to get a win against villanova feels like a big period maybe in the season for your team i mean i think the key word that you use right there is grit you know, and uh, and if you look at all our past championship teams, that's probably the one significant factor of all those guys. They had a lot of heart and they had a lot of grit. You know, coach has the old saying, 10 up, 10 down, 20 up, 20 down. And it could be more true, especially when you go into a, you know, a historic, traditional program, traditionally a blue blood type basketball, but has won national championships in Villanova. We got a lot of respect for them. And obviously we were undermanned going in. And man, you're not going to do it by finesse. Yeah. You're going to do this by a lot of grit. Hopefully getting a little bit healthier, but I also want to ask you about Quincy Guerrier, Coach. I mean, oh, man, yeah. the, the six threes, tied for the team lead in rebounds, leads the team in points. He had foul trouble in the first two games of this tournament. Got four today, but he didn't get five, and it felt like it was huge he didn't get five. I, I think with Quincy, sometimes he, uh, you know, obviously he's looking at our roster. He's thinking that we need him to score, but more importantly, we need him to bring that presence on the glass. We need him to bring that physicality in the paint. When he's thinking that way and playing that way, then guess what? The ball finds good energy. And Quincy's put in the time on the court and in the practice room, and nobody's watching, so we know he can shoot the heck out of it. We know he's a very talented offensive player, but when he's locked in on the physical side of the game, it opens everything else for him. So, so happy for Q. He needed that. We needed that from him. And more importantly, like the teammates kind of just fed off that because they see what he's going through, a little adversity there, you know, with him emotionally and just kind of feeling like he wasn't. He's one of those kids that don't want to disappoint you, Joey. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So he's got a big heart. So for him to come through like that is just huge for us, huge for him, and we're super excited about what's next. Closing on the 10-0 run, mm. uh, you know, how, how big was that, especially after Villanova got the first lead since the 1640 mark in the first half? You guys are not phased by that, it felt like. Able to close the game. How much momentum does that give you now heading into Pac-12 play against Washington State? Tremendous confidence, you know, and, and obviously the guys that are sitting out, we got some key guys that are sitting out they're expecting to have back, and for them to see those other guys that maybe theoretically are behind them on the roster yeah. kind of produce and show that grit and toughness, it's it's nothing short of inspiring, you know, so we're, we're a fired-up bunch right now, and it's pretty exciting as a coaching staff. 
you know, I finally feel like as we're moving away from maybe coaching every possession to all of a sudden now yeah. the guys are starting to take ownership of the group. They're taking ownership of their own locker room. And I've always joked with the guys in the beginning in early October, November, December, man, you're coaching every possession, but the great teams turn us, turn me into a cheerleader. Yeah. And they're like, oh, we got this, coach. You just sit down there and cheer, go, we got this. <laughs> and, I, and down the stretch, when we could have doubted as they made the run, Man, they bowed up yeah. and they banded together, and you could look them in the eyes, and they were like, "Oh man, we're gonna get this one." I saw it in their eyes, man. We're gonna get this one. Yeah. And man, they came through. Was super, super happy and proud of the guys. That's awesome, Coach. Thanks for coming up. Thanks, Appreciate Joey. It. Congratulations. Joey, awesome, awesome. Good stuff. Go Ducks. Mike Benega, assistant coach for the Ducks, and you could just hear that at the end. I mean, this was a team that was a little bit beaten up, and that's like a boxer, you know, rising to the occasion, and that's exactly what the Ducks did. Congratulations to the Ducks. That's a huge win. Also of note, uh, today, just coming out, if you're live with us in the 1 o'clock hour, Mimi Collier, 2022 Pac-12 Freshman of the Year. We knew it was coming. She set the record for Freshman of the Year honors on a weekly basis, so she had to be the Freshman of the Year, right? Pretty historic. Multiple matches with 25-plus kills. She's pretty good. Friday, 7 o'clock, Mimi Collier and the Ducks will be in action in the NCAA tournament at Matthew Knight Arena. When we come back, uh, Damon Merkerson is going to sit down with us. We also are going to talk a little women's basketball, and Team USA got the win. Woo! It's World Cup season. Back after this on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. Dear gas prices, Toyota is the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. That says it all. Toyota hybrids. Find yours at toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Based on manufacturer estimates, CY2000 through 2021 sales. Hey, Duck fans. We're all about protecting our home turf here in Eugene. You should do the same for your home with Country Financial Insurance. Most home insurance doesn't account for inflation, but with Country Financial, yours can. If something happens to your home, make sure you can rebuild the same house in the same place. Call a local representative or 866-COUNTRY and get a solid defense for your home. Home insurance policies issued by Country Mutual Insurance Company, Country Casualty Insurance Company, or Country Preferred Insurance Company, Bloomington, Illinois. Property must meet aging condition requirements, which vary by state. Dear gas prices, Toyota is the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. That says it all. Toyota hybrids. Find yours at toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Based on manufacturer estimates, CY2000 through 2021 sales. Your daily dose of Oregon athletics. This is Duck Insider from Learfield. all want our kids to grow up safe and healthy so we show them how with honest conversations that let them know what we expect that's especially important when it comes to alcohol and other drugs and when it comes to pain medications opioids they need to know that they should never be shared with friends or family for more information about talking with your kids about underage use of alcohol and other drugs visit underagedrinking.samhsa.gov so we all make choices about alcohol. Kids make choices whether to drink or not. Bye, Dad. Remember, I'm going to Alex's party tonight and sleeping over. Hey, uh, remind me about that party again. And adults make choices whether to talk about it. That's true of parents and every other trusted adult in a kid's life. Kids want to know our expectations, and they want honest answers in everyday conversations. So talk with your kids and help lead them on a positive path. Because when you talk, they hear you. Learn more at underagedrinking.samhsa.gov. Today is a big day because this is the first time that we've actually had Damon Merkerson live in the studio. Did you think about that before you walked in today? Because we recorded. You were kind enough to record because we had a scheduling conflict the first time you came on. And now... You're here live. How's it feel? Different? Oh, it's definitely different. Now, is it really? Now, yeah. I, I'm, I'm now. I'm thinking about it. Oh man, the, the nervousness is setting in. Okay. I'll be fine. I'll be cool. Whatever. <laughs> eh, we'll work through it. Welcome. Appreciate it. Bro. Welcome to the studio. Appreciate it. Uh, Damon Merkerson. We were talking about this last time you were on the senior associate athletic director for diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. About settling in. Do you feel like you've settled in yet? Woo. You know, um, I've almost made day ninety. 
So uh, I'll, I'll I'll be I'll be more honest than now. I'm joking. Okay. <laughs> day nineties. Yeah, day. I'm joking. I'm joking. Nah, man, I feel great. It's uh it's been really cool getting to know you know everybody here in the department, uh, in the larger community, and I've 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 already you know I've I've, I've bought and I got a bike. I don't All know right. if I told you that last time. I'm a biker, so now I'm just cycling around you know the town of Eugene. So uh, yeah, me and the wife's getting good. So we we uh, we're loving it so far. Man. I love that. I love to hear that. What's the favorite bike trail so far? What's the favorite path? Oh, I put my spot. The name of the path. I, or I'm, just give me an area. The area. I, I think this is near Valley River. So that okay. part of the yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. the river, going up and down there. I, I really like it. It's uh it's a it's a good maybe two three miles long. I think the whole yeah. the whole path. So it's peaceful, man. I enjoy it. You know, okay. I got I got the helmet. I'm, I'm again. I'm bought in. I'm all about in rain jacket, raincoat. Yeah, you know I'm ready. You might need that. <laughs> yeah, I've Maybe heard. Right, I've heard once or twice. <laughs> uh, so I have a number of different things to to talk with you about uh, today. And so it's it's always fun for me. At the, it's Athletic Director Tuesday, by the way. Mm-hmm. So you know we we make our rounds around. I always say that we go around the corner offices. Mm-hmm. You know, like right? We just have like a rotation. You know, of of all the senior associate ads, and then of course Rob that comes on the ad, and we. We're talking about previewing this last time you were on, that, that it's the Pac-12 and the SWAC Legacy Series and the events were going on for men's basketball and women's basketball. So I want to back up a little bit and, and have you kind of tell fans about that and, and how cool of a process it was, I'm sure, for you, for the student athletes, and just give us the background. And then, as you can imagine, I have multiple follow-up questions. Sure, no problem. So, yeah, the, the Pac-12 SWAC Legacy was uh, you know a partnership between uh, both conferences, uh, you know, really born and, and named, after, named the Legacy Series after the museum out in Alabama from um, where, you know, the executive director, Brian Stevenson, mm-hmm. most notably of from the movie Just Mercy, uh, you know, uh, wanted to bring some conversation awareness, you know, around social justice initiatives, as well as educating uh, the greater community about the historically black colleges, universities. So it's a it's a one of a kind partnership, one of its only kind. Right. And um this allowed us to really give the students on both at both ends at all the institutions to really learn more about each, each school and uh, what you know diversity, equity, inclusion initiatives or social justice initiatives that may be taking place. So for me, it was it was very very cool getting uh, with the teams we played being FAMU the men's side yeah. and Southern on the women's side, uh, and particularly with FAMU because Coach Robert McCullum was a former coach here at University of Oregon. He had a very intimate you know understanding of how our institution, our community is, and. Uh, it was, you know, again, transformational. I think both teams and, and, and staffs got a lot out of the, uh, the, uh, the, the journey, the experiment, as well as um, learning more about, you know, each, each campuses. Yeah. I, I was kind of curious for you coming into to this role. Were you aware of the Pac-12 and SWAC Legacy Series before you took the job, just with your work around this – around these different topics before or like did it make that sort of national headline for you you you, you know in the initial announcement i do recall it because it Mm -hmm. was announced in the in fall of 2021 but hadn't heard much about it in more details on it so as i got into the role i really learned you know in in greater detail what it was all about which was really cool and amazing man you know it just it just you know all the cool things i feel like i get to do that that was definitely a highlight of you know my time here the reason that i ask you that question is i I'm guilty of this, right? Like, I'm so in the Oregon bubble, right? And then the Pac-12 bubble, then the West Coast bubble, that I think sometimes, like, I'm always fascinated to see what actually makes the national headline, you know, in various topics. So, like, I always ask, for example, the – the opposing broadcaster, every time we have them come on and do like a preview, I always say like, what's the view of Oregon in mm, Salt Lake mm, City, you yeah, know, yeah, for example. Yeah. So I think that's cool that, that you at least saw the initial announcement, right? Because that means that it is making an impact right, beyond right. just our bubble. Yes. And that's what you're yes. supposed – that's what you're, you're all about. Yeah, right? that's what you hope for, right? I mean, you want, you want the conversation to be on, like, be on a national stage right. and uh, make sure we get as many airs and people knowing about it. So. Yeah. So one of the things that, that was awesome about this uh, was – not only the men hosting and doing some some different events and and even the teams having dinner together, mm-hmm. I'm sure was an yep. awesome thing, but also then you got the chance to go with the women's team, right? Yeah, to, to yeah. Southern University. Take us through that trip. Oh man, so it's uh, you know a historic campus, right? You know, so much history, um, so much done for the the, the larger African American and Black community. That, you know, Southern University played a role in so. You know, we get there with first class. Every everybody we encountered from the uh, from the AD to the senior staff to the you know we got to meet the chancellor of the law center, which was just you know he he brought us through so much, um, 
um, history that that law center provided the um, students and the people of Louisiana, especially in the black community, when you talk about uh, the number of black judges, right, mm-hmm. the number of black uh, prosecutors and and people just all throughout the law and legal field. It was um, and, and, and all the sites we got to see. We got a great uh, tour of the campus. Uh, the students, the the women's uh, players, went into the uh, the courtroom. They got into a little mock really? courtroom, started going off. You know, it was <laughs> it was just, it was cool, man. And and um, all throughout the time, you know, you, you think sometimes those institutions, people have a perception of, perception of them being lesser, and really, it's just different, you know. Yeah. And there's just so much cultural competency and cultural, you know, um, things that they provide that. You realize why they're, you know, such a such a diamond for the, the population they serve. You know, I was even talking to Terry Johns about this, who who made the trip mm-hmm. on, for us on the radio yeah. side, and yeah. you know, Terry was even just talking about the alums on the broadcast, oh, yeah. and just it's it's amazing to to see that, especially because I know there are a couple women's basketball players that are even considering going yeah. into law. You know, that yeah. that had to be a pretty cool experience, an impactful experience, I'd imagine. Yeah, and and who well, I'm very impressed with Coach Graves because you know naturally we're there to, we're still there to play a game and win right. a game, right? So. As we're doing the tour, we had it set for maybe like 30 minutes, 30, uh, and, and the students, you know, to the credit are like, well, can you show us more? And, you know, uh, the chancellor looks at coach and the coach, and I show more and coach Graves is like, yeah. keep going. Right. And, and, you know, that tour took almost an hour yeah. as a result. And it was just, you know, again, answering questions, talking about the different process, different programs they have. And it's, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you know, that's what it's about. I think we think of, you know, the student athlete, um, you think of a student athlete as one that's you know sometimes pr- professionalized, right. especially in the sports of basketball, right, and football. But there, that was a moment for us to be really focused on educational, yeah. right, and and it was it was beautiful to see. That's cool. I, I, I did want to ask you too about you know the the, the fact that it, it's we, we we can talk about how the the Oregon student athletes really mm-hmm. benefited from it, but part of the reason I'd imagine that the SWAC even wanted to do this is that there's a benefit there on the other side too, and that that's the educational yeah. experience on both directions. Yeah. You, you kind of saw that firsthand, I'd imagine. No, I mean, you, you know, you you talk. There's so many different implications from having a you know a, a non Power Five school uh, host a Power Five school, right? Right. Is you know there's financial implications there, but even even on the on the other side from you know. Uh, the students getting to see what type of contributions that the PWIs may do, PWIs being predominantly white institutions, mm-hmm. um, do for, you know, their greater community. Uh, I, I go back to Coach McCullum. When he was here, you know, the, the black cultural center that exists on campus uh, hadn't been built yet, but he was a part of the founding of that. Like, he was in a lot of the early conversations. So for his players that he's coaching at FAMU to come and see what mm-hmm. that center means for the students at a predominantly white institution from a perspective they may not see – it was eye-opening as they got, you know, some of that history uh, given to them from our uh, the, the director of that center, Eris Hall, um, to the FAMU basketball players. So they got the chance to go and see it. And they did. see, like, the, our coach helped make this happen. They did. They did. We, we went there and we sat down, you know. And, again, they had a tight schedule. You know, the yeah. next day they're playing at Portland, right. Portland State, you know. So they, they took another 30, 40 minutes out of their trip from the bus ride to sit and walk through that uh, our black cultural center. That's really cool. Damon Murkerson is joining us. I want to get a break. Come back. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about, well, a number of different topics because we haven't had you on since the NCAA even did yeah. their social initiative yeah. Yeah. on DEIB. And, and then, of course, I'll have to ask you if we missed anything. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, we, we probably won't, but we'll see. We'll see. Back after this on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. At Shadow Hills Country Club, our all-inclusive event pricing allows us to take care of all of the details while you enjoy your event. Our wedding garden, expansive grounds, ballroom and meeting rooms can accommodate any size event and come complete with full catering and service staff. From weddings to business and social events, Shadow Hills offers the benefits of a resort atmosphere and the peace of a country setting just minutes from downtown Eugene. For more details, call us today or go to shadowhillsevents.com. From the weight room to the classroom, on the field and off it, On Point proudly supports University of Oregon athletics because student athletes do so much more than bring us pride on game day. They bring our entire community together in Eugene and all across Oregon. So whether you're watching the game in the stadium, at home, or at your favorite local business, their success makes all of us stronger. On Point Community Credit Union, onpointcu.com. Federally insured by NCUA, equal housing opportunity. Listening to Duck Insider. Duck Insider on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. 
Meet Ed, movie buff, animal lover, safe driver. Five years of driving an ambulance teaches you a thing or two. If people knew what I know, lives could be saved. When I see a car trying to rush past the turning bus, I get concerned. You see, when big vehicles turn right, they have to swing wide to make the turn. And that's a lesson you don't want to learn the hard way. When trucks and buses turn, let's you and I wait. It's, it's our roads. It's, it's our safety. safety. Visit www.sharetheroadsafely.gov. I've been driving trucks for a long time. And safety is my number one priority. I know that my truck has huge blind spots. That's why I remember to check my mirrors often for smaller vehicles. Everyone can help keep our roads safe. Next time you're behind the wheel, try to avoid lingering in those blind spots. It can be dangerous. Let's all plan to share the road safely. Learn how at www.sharetheroadsafely.gov. We actually just continued the conversation a little bit during the break. Back in the Country Financial Studio, Duck and Cider presented by On Point Community Credit Union. Our Senior Associate Athletic Director, can I, you know, the, 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 the business card, like I said to you last time, is long. You know? <laughs> do you, I mean, do, when you introduce yourself at this point, Damon, are you just like DEIB? Right, right, right. Like, or are you, are, you, are you going out and like, nobody says CEO anymore. Chief Executive Officer, right? It's just right. CEO. Right, right, you right. You feel right, like right. the 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 abbreviation is is down the acronym is is good enough? Yeah, you know, I, I sometimes to, to the uninitiated, I right. give them I give them Chief Diversity Officer. Okay. So to, to gotcha. those that are yep. that are that are hip to the game, I'll say DEIB, and then for those that I'm really like new, I I, I gotta go I gotta go whole title at least one time. That's right. And then we can work our way, you know, That's back right. to those acronyms. Well, it's it's interesting you say that because I, I I say to Jody Sykes all the time, I introduce her on the show as Chief Compliance Officer. But her full title is much longer yeah, than that. Yeah, very much, right, 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 like, right. But, you know, it, that's interesting that you bring that up because I, I, I feel like that's going to be one of those examples, like, when everyone knows what that acronym stands for and what mm -hmm. it means, right, That mm -hmm. that's a better world that yeah. I think we're living in. At least that, that's why I bring up that example. I'd be curious. I mean, you agree, I would imagine. Yeah, no, I know, and I appreciate your intention. I mean, words matter, language matter. The, the entirety of the title, you know, with including belonging, yeah. is is intentional on what, you know, the goal of our department and what we're trying to accomplish. Chief Diversity Officer, Chief diversity officer does that too, yeah. but, you know, diversity training, you know, there's, there's, there's negative connotations to a lot of things and simpli simplicity yeah. where um, the, the, the whole title is, again, encapsulates and perfectly captures what, I yeah. what we're trying to do here. I want to actually back up a little bit um, because last time you were on when we talked about the – what the position was going to look like, and, and you had some impact in that. Can you can you remind fans just about like why you wanted to include the belonging and, and what you envisioned the position to be moving forward? Yeah, sure. So, you know, when you think about belonging, you know, you know, diversity is diversifying the group, right? You know, equity, making sure everyone has an equitable amount, uh, including others. But belonging is, is talking about you know you being ac actually being able to be your authentic self, right? You know, we don't want to create a culture of assimilation, right? We we don't we don't want a, a melting pot. We want a salad, yeah. all right. We want you want everything, every fruit, every vegetable. Excuse the analogies, but you know, um, um, still keeping their their authentic selves and contents while still making and creating a, a, a you know a a, a well oiled working machine uh, or or just culture in general. So. Um, for you need me, a good dressing on the salad. You need a good dressing on a salad. You know, I, you know, you'd be a thousand islands or uh, uh, French. I'm not a big French guy. Trying to think raspberry what I, vinaigrette. Raspberry. You know, I can go. I can go raspberry. Yeah. I go a little sweet every now and then, yeah. right? So, but uh, yeah, man. For me, it's been um, again a a, a a a journey of figuring out where I best fit within each unit and department. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't stay in one lane. Particularly if if, if I could simplify it, I'd say I like to be the connective tissue mm -hmm. that combines and centralizes a lot of all the operations that we do and advise you know, different units and departments as, as needed. Yeah, I, I just I wanted to go back to that. And if you missed our first conversation talking about all of this, you're going to go back to Duck Insider from about five weeks ago uh, <laughs> right, because right. you're part of the rotation. Now, yeah, yeah. Right? You know, it, the baseball analogy is that there's a few starting pitchers that go through the rotation of Athletic Director Tuesday. And now, gotcha. you know, yeah, I'm in there, man. You're yeah, one of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're love one it. of them. If you weren't a football player, what sport would you have played? You know, I played basketball. Basketball is probably one of my, my, my first loves. You know, it's a simple, not simple, but it's it's the sport. You just need a, a ball and a hoop, 
right? You don't need to necessarily bring a lot of people around, right. and you can still play and enjoy it. And then, which goes into my other love, which is track and field. I love racing. You know, it, it was it's probably the the you know you're better than me. Let's race right now. You can do it at any point, and it's uh it's it's uh it's fair, if you yeah. will, right? You know, yeah. yeah. I get that. I get that. Uh, Damon Murgerson joining us. All right, I want to go back to, to the Pac-12 and SWAC Legacy Series for just a moment because it's it's not just this season. Yeah. Now the women will be hosting one of those schools coming up next year, and then the men are going to make the trip mm-hmm. out to Florida A&M coming up next year. So the, the longevity of an agreement like this, and, and I, I kind of wanted to ask you, like, how beneficial is that, that this isn't just one yeah. time this season? You know, there's something to look forward to next year, and, and who knows, maybe it continues even beyond that. I would love that. Yeah, I, I think, the, you know, having that continuity, having that, that annualness of the program allows for us as an institution to do some cool things throughout the year, right? Yeah. You know, it's not, it's, not, it's not just we're playing them – and we will see them next year. You know, what we're hoping to do is have some educational opportunities throughout the year to connect with FAMU, uh, Florida AM, and Southern University. Uh, and, and, and how we can involve the greater campus communities. You know, how can we get our, you know, our, our students that are interested in HBCUs or in college athletics to be involved in this? You know, uh, we're, we're, we're already having conversations and meeting with other campus partners to figure out how do we increase that because the, the, all these things both, you know, uh, a tribute to both of all of our institutions overall missions yeah. right in higher ed so it's uh no it's amazing man and, and again it, it gives us a chance to you know talk talk about sport and make it bigger than sport yeah. right your counterparts across the the country i suppose even beyond the pac-12 do you envision more of, of these sorts of agreements and these sorts of partnerships now because i think this one has been met with such I, I, at least on, on the oregon side i know sure. it's been met with great great love you feel like it's going to happen more and more? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think what you see across the, you know, across the country is uh, more roles like mine being yeah. implemented and instituted at their institutions or at least the responsibility being given to somebody on their senior staffs. And, uh, you know, our Pac-12 DEI group, we meet biweekly, you know, if not monthly, to have these kind of conversations, talk about how we can be most impa- impactful and how we can collaborate with each other, right, to, to move forward, you know, because this is – Again, we are competing against each other on the field, but we all understand from an educational standpoint, this is much bigger than just the sport and just athletics. You know, I, I'm glad that you said that because there, it's so true that you're you're competing on the field, and there's rivalries, and fans feel that. But then, you know, a lot of times I think it gets it gets overlooked that in the industry that you and I are in, mm-hmm. people go to different schools, right? Like, yeah. it's really kind of rare that you end up working at your alma mater, right? You correct. Know? So yeah. you kind of bounce around, and it's nice to have that connective tissue to borrow a phrase from you. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it, it's again, you 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 go back to the to the the reason we got into this work. Yeah. You know, obviously we got we have our our. our our, our loyalties, you know, and right. we have a fan base. But at the end of the day, we're about developing students, educating students, and yeah. you put them at the center of everything that we do. And that and that doesn't that isn't limited to just where you went to yeah. when it happens. You're also leading some internal education series for student athletes, for staff. I was hoping you could share a little bit of that with the fan base, just to talk about what you're doing more on a daily basis. Yeah, yeah. So so monthly, you know, we're having some educational programming offered to uh, staff and students. You know, haven't had a ton this past fall. Uh, fall term but as we head into the you know the winter and spring terms you know whether it be around you know celebratory months such as black history month or just be current events you know and skill sets uh there's going to be multiple uh workshops that take place and um this past this past fall term we did something about hbcus uh for the students we talked a little bit about you know implicit bias uh and um and, and again, we're going to continue doing those things. What, one thing about me is I don't I want it to be very tailor specific to the needs of the teams and the needs of the students and the staff. So while we're, ha- we're going to have a curriculum, uh, it's also going to be very, uh, again, individualized so that we're really meeting the needs of uh, what people feel like, you know, whether they're, what their team needs or their staff needs. So that's from a coaching standpoint and a student standpoint. I think that's great. I mean, I, you know, it, it's interesting, like as a as a teacher, right, like I, mm-hmm. I, you try to adapt to. To, to the needs of each class, you know, and a coach, the best coaches, I would say, adapt to the players that they sure. have, you know, it, it just makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. You feel like you draw from, from your competitive days being being coached, being taught, you feel like you draw on that a lot? I would say so, yeah, you know, I, I think, you know, I think a lot about my, um, really my youth too, you know, co- college yeah. is one thing, but I, I, I felt, I was blessed to feel prepared 
to like what I was going to encounter for the most part. But I really think about those little league days. You know, the youth yeah. sport days are really are some of the the ones I think back on on how you know particular experiences got me thinking the way I thought or how I understand understood competition the way I do and why it's important to for you know DEI work DEIB work or things of that nature to be exist because it's it, it really needs to be normalized yeah. right I think we look at it as another thing that's add on but really no this has always been there we just haven't been doing a good job at it so which is why we have some of the issues we currently Right. Part of that, uh, also with with awareness and normalizing it, the NCAA just went through their social initiatives. On yeah, yeah. DEIB. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I know you worked on that. Yeah, the social media. So you know, they they it's a, it's it's think it's oh, I forget what the year, but they've been doing it for the last couple of years, an annual kind of social media blast of uh, themes, you know, throughout the week, in which it gives you know uh, college universities and campuses a chance to um, uh, allow their student athletes to highlight whether it be a cause. Uh, whether it be just focusing on that theme, uh, you know, raising money for certain initiatives. I think it's just a good way of advocacy and engagement. And uh, the participation from our student athletes was uh, mainly through social. And, uh, you know, it flows well with our, our, our already established, you know, Be Oregon initiative. Yeah. So it's, it's, it, it works perfect for us and it just allows us to, you know, spend another, t- another week focusing on conversations that we do throughout the year and annually. What else is on the horizon for you? What are you working on? What's on your desk these days? What's on my desk? Well, I, I'd be remiss not to mention, you know, it is Native American History uh, Heritage Month, and uh, we've had some programming on campus that's been amazing, some great speakers. Uh, our student athletes, um, our SAC committee, actually did some education. Uh, we had a social media blast um, uh, around Native American Heritage Month. Um, uh, Katovin, um from our track and field team, a distance runner who is a Native American, identifies, uh, has a documentary getting ready to come out about his oh, own wow. history and his own journey. He showed, he shared that trailer with the student athletes and talked about, you know, what it means to be a good ally to a Native American and indigenous person. And a lot of it just had to do with respect and, um, you know, and, and education. So I think that was, that was um, a great event, great turnout. Wow. And, you know, just preparing for the preparing for the winter term. You know, I, I got to get used to the winter term. That's still new for me. I'm still oh, really? trying to get used to that. But um, yeah, getting ready to roll out this curriculum, um, and uh, and do some more celebratory things during the, you know the months that uh, are um, acknowledging different yeah. groups. So. So you you came from semesters. Yeah, I'm a I'm, I'm a semester guy. Semester semesters. It's all I've known. You'll learn to love the quarters. Uh, you know. I, uh, that's what I'm hearing. That's what yeah. I'm hearing. Yeah, I'm hearing. Yeah. I'm hearing Good. that. I'm glad you're hearing that. I, I, you know, I used to think that I was in that I was in the minority, not or, or feeling like I like I love the quarter system when I yeah. was in school, um, and I love it now. Honestly, as a as, as someone who works in, in in athletics and works at a university, I don't know. I it's fast, I man. Like it. It's I, I like mean, the it's the fast pr- pace. It's quick. Like I guess you don't have time to fall behind. Right. So it's like you know, boom, 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 boom. I think from a from a professional standpoint, it makes me have to be a little bit more efficient yeah. on programs me right too. now. Because like now, you know, we start. You know, the students are all gone, and there's things I was initially thinking about doing in December, and then someone had to remind me, oh, the semester's over this week. I said, no, okay, yeah, I'll push right. it back. <laughs> right, yeah. January 9th, uh, classes are back. It's dead week, actually, at the University of Oregon right now, and then finals week is next week. So, you know, and if you're one of those teachers, uh, just – on behalf of all former students and current students, if you schedule a final at 4 o'clock on Friday during finals week, boo. Nasty, make it, nasty work. Make it an essay. <laughs> Turn in the essay. Don't, don't, don't do an in-person final at 4 o'clock on a Friday. That's do you hilarious. agree? That's hilarious. Yeah, no, yeah. no. I mean, that's it's miserable. I had one of those. I had one of those. Yeah. Did you go to it? I did. Okay, respect you. That's yeah. the most important question. Did you and, go to it? You know, and it was even worse because it was before spring break. Mm. So that really just cut into that week break. You know, because sometimes you can get like 10 days Yeah, out yeah, yeah. No, I hear you. you, know? I hear so, you. Anyway, this is why I like quarter schools. Yeah, I see, man. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, uh, I've been a uh, fan. I, I, I'm, I'm, hearing it's, I'm hearing people like it. So. It's good. It's good. Damon Merkerson, our guest. Okay, last thing for you. Uh, you came into the studio a couple weeks ago. Tremendous content idea, and oh, I want to yeah, yeah. I want to pull this off. <laughs> Tell fans about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. So, um, you know, I, I think I think we want to figure out. We like telling stories about our student athletes, right? Yes. And our student athletes have such great stories and such, 
you know, uh, a, a great culture that they talk about. And sometimes we, we're not even aware about how different some students are or th- things they may have alike. Yeah. So, you know, it, this, this came about talking with a student. I want to name them, but they were talking about fishing to me. And this person is not from anywhere where there are a lot of lakes. So I'm just trying to understand how did this young person get into fishing? <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it, it took me back. And I just thought about, you know, ducks, you know, ducks out of the water. You know, I want to – highlight you know two student athletes who have you know some uniquenesses about whether it be an interest or about their culture in which um the other student or the staff or maybe in department didn't yeah. even know about right and you know as fans you know sometimes we we, we get really locked in on them as athletes yes. and it's just you know they perform but you know these pe- they're people they're people with such you know unique stories and unique interests and uh it, hopefully we're gonna get that up and going in the in the winter or spring uh term in which we'll, you know, I'll have a conversation and go out with them to do, you know, whatever it is, whether it be shift, uh, uh, fishing or surfing. It. You know, I hope someone likes surfing because I want to try it. Yeah. I want to try surfing. I'm nervous, though, because I'm, I'm, you know, I can't, I can swim, but I don't know if I can swim that well. Well, yeah, in a perfect, sure in a perfect world, though, you're not swimming when you're surfing. That's true, but I, but I know I will be. Yeah, that, that, which is why you that's, know. I mean, yeah. that's good of you to be uh, yeah. planning ahead. But I'm decent, you know. I can, you know. Let me hold, let me backtrack. You're I can athlete. swim. I can't float. That's what's weird. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I can't float, okay. and I feel like I'll get fatigued in the ocean. Right. And yeah. Knowing how to float may be important. Yeah. Well, stay stay upright <laughs> on the board. You know, that's. I we're, I think we can make this happen. I yeah. think we can make this happen. So, student athlete who's out there. Let us know who can surf. I think it's a great idea, though. Yeah. Because, you know, isn't it funny that, like, the icebreaker of, oh, tell us something about yourself that no one knows. Right. Right. Like, that's right, really right, what right. it is. Exactly. Right. Right. Know? But and show us. Yeah. And show I think us. I think that's awesome. I love that. Well, anything else that fans should know? Uh, anything else on the horizon that you want to mention that we didn't get to today? No. You know, uh, again, just, uh, you know, uh, to the fans, and, and enjoy and, and cheer on us, cheer us on as we get ready for some more uh, upcoming games. You know, women's volleyball is big out here, you know. You know, that's a big one. So, uh, and, uh, you know, go Ducks. Let's go Ducks. I like it. Damon Mergerson. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. Appreciate it, sir. Uh, the Chief Diversity Officer, the Senior Associate Athletic Director of Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, Belonging, DEIB. Did I get it all? You got it. Woo! You got it. I'm one for one today. Let's get it. We're going to go two for two when we come back. Kelly Graves, Oregon women's basketball head coach. Some of his thoughts coming out of the tournament in Portland and then heading in to – More non-conference matchups for the Ducks. Back after this on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. Hey, Duck fans. Jackson's is a proud sponsor of Oregon football. And this holiday season, we have the perfect stocking stuffer for the Duck fan in your family. Oregon football trading cards. The cards will feature your favorite Duck football student athletes. So collect them all to complete your set. Be on the lookout for these cards coming soon exclusively to your local Oregon Jackson's food stores. Visit jacksons.com for store locations. Jacksons. Let's go. From the weight room to the classroom, on the field and off it, On Point proudly supports University of Oregon athletics because student athletes do so much more than bring us pride on game day. They bring our entire community together in Eugene and all across Oregon. So whether you're watching the game in the stadium, at home, or at your favorite local business, their success makes all of us stronger. On Point Community Credit Union. OnPointCU.com. Federally insured by NCUA. Equal housing opportunity. This is Duck Insider, presented by On Point Community Credit Union on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. I found hope in the midst of an overwhelming situation. Alcoholism is a disease that can affect any family. Everyone suffers, but there is help and hope at Al-Anon Family Groups. Al-Anon gave me my life back. I'm a better father and husband. Are you in an overwhelming situation because of someone else's drinking? Al-Anon and Alateen can help. Local and virtual meetings are available. Maybe one could work for you. Call 1-866-200-0033 or visit alanon.org slash hope. Medicaid and CHIP offer free or low-cost health coverage for children and teens. Hospital and doctor visits, prescriptions, shots, and more are covered. That's peace of mind for parents if a child is sick or gets injured. And parents may now be eligible for Medicaid, too, even if they've applied in the past. Enrollment is always open. Visit insurekidsnow.gov or call 1-877-KIDS-NOW. Paid for by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services.
Back inside the Country Financial Studio, it's Duck Insider presented by On Point Community Credit Union. Again, my thanks to Damon Merkerson, uh, just doing great work within the University of Oregon Athletic Department. Glad to have him on the team. We didn't get a chance to talk about women's basketball on the floor as much as I would have liked yesterday. They had the game against North Carolina. I tell you, they were that close to pulling off that win against the number eight eight team in the country, but dropped a top 25 matchup. Then Sunday against Michigan State, got the win. And there were some moments in the second half where, similar to the Oregon men's team, things were a little tense, you know, got a little tight. But the Oregon women were able to get it done. Uh, they went on a game-clinching 13-2 run, also got a career high of 15 points and a career high of 16 rebounds from Filipina Shea. They had six, 14 points, I should say, and six assists from Tahina Pow Pow. 12 points with seven rebounds from Grace Van Sluten. Oregon continues to get better and better with some of these young players. And I think that's maybe what's so exciting about the Oregon women's team is that they're young, they're motivated, and they don't really have a lot to lose right now. Ducks are 5-1. and one. And they're heading back home this week. Kelly Graves is going to meet with the media this week before on Saturday they take on Portland at 2 o'clock. I said we were going to hear from Kelly Graves, and we're going to do that, but Damon was so great to talk to, I got to sneak in one more time out. And we'll come back and hear from Kelly Graves. Some of his thoughts coming out of that Phil Knight Invitational Talking Hoops on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. Dear gas prices, Toyota is the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. That says it all. Toyota hybrids. Find yours at toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Based on manufacturer estimates, CY2000 through 2021 sales. From the weight room to the classroom, on the field and off it, On Point proudly supports University of Oregon athletics because student athletes do so much more than bring us pride on game day. They bring our entire community together in Eugene and all across Oregon. So whether you're watching the game in the stadium, at home, or at your favorite local business, their success makes all of us stronger. On Point Community Credit Union. OnPointCU.com. Federally insured by NCUA. Equal housing opportunity. Dear gas prices, Toyota is the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. That says it all. Toyota hybrids. Find yours at toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Based on manufacturer estimates, CY2000 through 2021 sales. More Duck Insider coming up on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. The United States Deputy Sheriff's Association is a national nonprofit and the largest non governmental provider of services to law enforcement. The USDSA assists city, county, state, and federal agencies with free safety equipment donations and officer survival training, along with cash donations to families of law enforcement officers who perish in the line of duty, college scholarships for the children of law enforcement, a citizen awareness program, and more. For more information on the USDSA and how you can help, visit usdeputy.org. You're never completely ready to adopt a teen. For late nights writing English papers. Or your teen's music taste. For dinners, where they talk more on their phone than with you. For the first time, they call you mom. You're never completely ready to adopt a teen, and you can't imagine the reward. To learn more about adopting a teen, visit AdoptUSKids.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. Back on Nugget Cider, presented by On Point Community Credit Union, Joy Mack in the Country Financial Studio. Uh, after the game, Kelly Graves sat down with Terry John. Some of his thoughts as the Ducks got a win to conclude the Phil Knight Invitational. Coach, it looked like maybe you're going to run away with it, and then all of a sudden it, it wasn't a run away, and it was a ball game, wasn't it? You had to work for it. Well, one of the words that you and I have used when we've talked before games and after games is consistency, and it uh, kind of reared its ugly head a little bit tonight. It's got off to a great start, just like we did the other night against North Carolina, and then kind of let it let took the foot off the gas, and they got back into it, but. Uh, and then when they tied that in the fourth quarter, uh, you know, there was a cause for some concern, but uh, I thought from there on, we really uh, executed well. Our kids stepped up and made big shots. We had a, some really good uh, performances tonight from individuals. Yeah, 11 to two run after it was yeah. tied at 68 and the ball movement all of a sudden was there, wasn't it? It was, yep, it was. And, uh, uh, but you know, we made some shots. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's funny how that, how that works. You know, the other night we, I thought did some good things and had some good shots and then we just we didn't make those but uh, 
Uh, yeah, it was a good way to finish it. This is a good team. This is an NCAA tournament team we just beat, and I'm not sure we were at our best, but uh, but we played a, a pretty good basketball game. We actually played pretty good up here. Yeah. I, I'm I'm pleased with uh, with our effort and our execution. You mentioned individual performances. Filipina Che career high 15 points, career high 16 rebounds, five three pointers, career high for India Rogers. Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously Indy and she hit some big ones late in the game, which and, and during that 11 2 stretch that yeah. you're talking about hit a couple that were uh, important. Philly was just well big. That's kind of yeah. A, yeah, literally <laughs> and figuratively tonight. But yeah, uh, just completely dominated the rebounds and um, you know, and she's got to continue to work on finishing, you know, hit hit her free throws tonight for the most part. And had a really good game, but two players I, I want to highlight. I I thought they really gave us a big lift tonight. I think number one was uh, um, Taylor Hosendove. I thought she came in and gave us some really good minutes tonight. Uh, and then Elise Hurst. I yeah. thought Elise was big. She hit a couple of huge threes and uh, and defensively she was good and on the floor late in the game. And um, you know, so two kids coming off the bench making an impact. All right, so you like what you got here. Now, now you got a week off. Well, almost. Well, yeah, a week off before. Pretty Portland much. Comes, yeah. But so you got some things you know what to work on, but yeah. also some things that you liked, right? Like, like you said, and, and you can enhance that during. The oh week. yeah, no question. Hey, we just played two two of the better teams in the country yeah. up here, and we can't, went home with a split. We would like to have won two, but no, definitely some things we can build on. Uh, and get better on uh, but for the most part I, I I was really pleased with again our effort our our, our starts we just got to maintain it I thought defensively we kind of took a step back tonight uh, a little bit but um, you know by and large it's good good weekend a great trip for us yeah, kids right. grew up all right I know you got a press conference waiting for you so. 10 of 19 from the three big guy I know that's pretty you couldn't make 10 of 19 layups by yourself in warm-ups not now well, maybe not. Maybe no, I don't back know. Maybe in the day, I could. when you were playing above the rim, you could have. <laughs> but no, it was. Uh, listen, I'm so proud of our kids. Yeah. Great second half. We challenged her at halftime. She only had one rebound, so she had six in the second half. We we went to her a little bit uh, in that stretch. You know, in the first half, they combined 21 of their 37 points came from second chance points and points off turnovers. In the second half, they only had 10 yeah. in those two categories combined. So we we cleaned up what we wanted to in the second half. So that's a a mark of a mature team or a maturing team. Yeah. Kelly Graves, Oregon women's basketball head coach. Uh, sometimes he's got things to say. You heard Terry at the end say, Coach, I know you got a press conference. Yeah, but so many threes. I love that. Kelly Graves going to meet with the media this week as well. Tomorrow's show, Rob Mosley joins us and Matt Ulmer join us. Going to be fun. See you then. Victor deployed for the first time to Afghanistan in 2003. He sustained a moderate traumatic brain injury. One of the most important elements of caregiving is taking care of yourself. For many military veteran caregivers, their caregiving journey starts earlier in life and lasts longer.